We are hopeful that we'll see the resumption of the Pennsylvania 500 presented by Pep Boys shortly. Sun is shining. They are working hard to get this racetrack ride, but it is so big, two and a half miles around, that it takes, uh, it's a job to get it done. While we wait on the restart, let's check in with Matt. Well, Alan, Jeff Green finished second, a career best last week in New Hampshire. And you're trying to carry over that confidence and momentum, but right now you are struggling back in 34. Yeah, I owe a car and wasn't very good there on a green flag start there. And uh, just loose all the way through the corner and pushing, too. So that wasn't very much fun to drive. But How are you going to fix it? <laughs> we're going to come in here and uh, change a right rear spring and hook a rear sway bar up and uh, kind of get like the 29 is. He's pretty good, so we're going to just kind of change our car over to that. The caution laps, Matt, is so, they're long, so long here. I feel like we'll have a couple of caution laps when we get going here to, to get the track completely dry. So uh, the good thing about the, the north up here, I guess in the east, too, you, get, you got a lot of daylight left, so I feel like we'll get this whole race in. Well, pit Road could be a very busy place with a number of drivers struggling this afternoon, Alan. Okay, Matt. You know, you're probably just like us. You want to see some race cars on the racetrack. It's been a while since we've done that. Me? Yeah. Of course I do. Well, I'm talking to everyone. Oh, I mean, the folks that's yeah. listening to us. That, oh, have, yeah. that have waited out this whole rain delay with us. Of course and they we do. are so grateful they've done that. Let's see some race cars on the racetrack. How about the Daytona 500 in February? The very end of it, when all that drama was unfolded in those last few laps. Is that what we're going to see? Yeah, that's okay, what we're going to see. Do it. Let's go back and watch the end of the 2002 Daytona 500. Race cars on the racetrack, please. The Daytona 500, the great American race, has come down to what will be a final, frantic, six-lap sprint to the checkered flag. Jeff Gordon leads. Sterling Marlin is second. Both two-time Daytona 500 winners, but they've got a hungry pack behind them who've never won it before. Ward Burton and Elliott Sadler in third and fourth. Then more experience. The 86 winner, Jeff Bodine in fifth. And Dale Jarrett, a three-time 500 champion in sixth. And this restart is going to be the whole marbles here. Jeff Gordon's got to be careful that Sterling Marlin doesn't lay back and get a run on him on the back straight away. Are you ready? Green flag, green flag. If they don't get by Jeff Gordon before they come around the next time, oh, they will not pass it. And Michael Trouble. Waltrip. Michael Waltrip. Jeff Green is involved. Oh, Jeff Gordon's spinning down the inside. Gordon is in the grass. They're racing for the lead at the head of the pack, double wide. Stay below the white line. You got some people out there. There you go. Sterling Marlin. He's got damage. He must have hit Gordon. And here comes Ward Burton on the outside. He's got Back a run. With Elliot Sadler giving him some help. Here's Jeffrey Bodine trying to help the 40 car. Caution flag is out. This could be the race to the finish of the Daytona 500. You'll see some rubbing here, I'm sure, getting back to the line. This is this may be it. Six cars sprinting toward the caution flag. Marlin inside, seeking his third 500 win. Ward Burton trying to get his first victory. Two dodges, drag racing back to the caution flag. Who's going to get there first? Marlin oh, by yeah, oh, yeah. I think what happened was Sterling Marlin went down to go underneath Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon went to put the block on, and he went across the nose of Sterling Marlin's car, and that's what spun him out. The race is not over. They're going to red flag the event. They're going to stop the field, restart the race, and try and settle it. And Terry Labonte, a lot of damage to the nose of that car. And with Sterling, can he last a couple of laps under the green? And I believe that's where Jeff Gordon came across the nose of Sterling's car. Jeff Gordon on pit road. He may not be out of this yet if they're red flagging this thing, Bill. Jeff Gordon on pit road. The spotter said we got spun, we got spun. The car looks fine. He's getting right side tires. This is supposed to be a four tire stop. They want to get on pit road and get off of it before the red flag comes out. Left sides will go on. We'll have plenty of room to get out of pit road. They tighten the lugs, check the roof flaps, pull the fender away from the front left tire and send Gordon back out off of pit road. But he came in while the pit road was closed. So he's going to have to go to the end of the line on the restart. We'll double check that to be sure, but the red and the red flag with the gold yeah, cross pit, signaling pit road is closed is out. Now. Only about, uh, there it is. 14 cars on the lead lap, the red flag coming out. Hey, the red, Jeff, they're stopped back there, so be careful coming off too. The red flag is out over the Daytona 500 with four and a half laps to go. But what, who did all this crashing on the backstretch off turn two? 
See the debris off turn two? I think that was pieces still probably coming off oh, the cars from the wreck on from the, the right away. On the front stretch. I got you. Wow. That may I'll even... Fought. I mean, Sterling hung back so much there that, uh, I mean, you know, he. I just, I didn't have a choice but to slow down there. And he had a run on me and I blocked him, you know, got myself turned. That's got myself turned. Yep. Jeff Gordon's explanation. Let's take a look at what happened all over the place. Well, here's what we're talking about. This is the, so key on this restart. Sterling was laying back. Now, all these guys back here are jamming up because some of these guys laid back before the restart. Michael Waltrip hit by Mark Martin. Rusty Wallace is involved. Watch Waltrip almost go by the pace car here. Yikes. And Robert Presley's car being pushed on pit road. Man, pace car gassed it right there at the last second. One more look. We see him, Jeff Gordon bringing him down really, really slow. And then they, someone, Mark Martin, runs in the back of Michael Waltrip. And now watch here, Sterling Marlin goes underneath the, of Jeff. Jeff goes down, tries to run the black block on Sterling, and runs across the nose. But Marlin was below that yellow line, wasn't he? That's out of bounds. Drivers were told in the driver's meeting, if you go below that yellow line and advance your position, you're going to be penalized. That's right. Will they penalize Sterling Marlin there? There's Jeff Green. That's John Darby, the guy in the blue shirt. He's the new Winston Cup director. And the man in the uh, blue sport coat right on the screen with the dark glasses is David Hoots. He is the race director. He's the referee, basically. He's called ball or strike. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, I'm sure he's checked. He may have been wondering how that right front damage looks. The car. Sterling Marlin is jumping out of his car. He's going around to look at the right front fender. But, oh, he can't do that. You can't work on your car under the red flag. That's the NASCAR rule. Pull it off a little bit. You're not allowed hey, to work on your out. car they under the red flag. Out. Matt? Well, Alan down here in the 40 pit, Lee McCall, the biggest concern is that right front fender. How is it? Well, we don't know. We don't know yet. We, uh, we think it's revving a little bit, but um, we'll just have to see when Sterling comes around, and uh, hopefully it's okay. Um, you know, I don't... I don't know what happened out there, but uh, it's just been an awesome day for the Coors Light race team and uh, everybody that at Chip Ganassi Racing. Uh, all the guys back to the shop give us a great car, and guys had great pit stops today. So uh, every hot comes out, we uh, we had a good speed week. Sterling looked at it. What did he say? They wouldn't let him look at it, so uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know how bad it is. We'll just Again, we'll just have to let's see. Is it... Uh, we might have to come in. We don't know yet. Hey, Matt. Matt, Danny. tell Lee that they wouldn't let him pull it out. They let him look at it. They wouldn't let him pull it out. Lee, they let him look at it, but they wouldn't let him pull it out because you know that's against the rules under red flag conditions. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, it's, uh, again, it's just been a great day for the whole organization. Uh, hopefully he can get it out enough. <laughs> Hopefully you can get it out. But again, you can't, you're not allowed to work on the car during a red flag condition. That's right. So, a couple of things that we'll wait to hear from NASCAR on. Sterling Marlin below the line. Watch Sterling jump out of the car here. And is he working on his car under the red flag? <laughs> that looked like a pull to me. I don't know about you. see the official jump out of the pace car saying, hey, no, you can't no, do that. no, 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 no. <laughs> Get back in there. Here's what they were saying down in the Sterling Marlin pits a minute ago. Sterling, were you below the yellow line when you passed Gordon? He run me down there. My left side was below the police. He run me down below it. Team owner Chip Ganassi there. And that was honest. I mean, that's exactly what happened. He he had his left side below the yellow line when Jeff Gordon tried to... The race at the tail end of the longest line, Glove. 
All right, they just made the call. We have the longest line or lead lap? The tail end of the longest line. I would ask an official. That is the message being relayed to Sterling Marlin from his team. For mm -hmm. what? There is only one line. Under 10 laps to go, there's only one line. So he, they're saying that he's got to start all the way at the back of the field. Three laps to settle the Daytona 500. Well, it looks like they got a run on him. Look at the blocking going on back in the pack. And look, somebody's got a great run on the outside. Ryan Newman, the youngster from Indiana in the 12 car. And this is exactly what Ward Bird needed. He needed those forts to get side by side, and it's working to perfection for him. Johnny Benson in the 10 car up high try to follow Newman. Jeff Gordon and Marlin not in the picture yet. careful though BP when this group catches them. Here comes Dale Jarrett up behind Jeffrey Bodine in the 88 car. And Elliot Sanders moved into that second spot right on the back bumper board Burton. The first two have never won the 500. The second two have won it four times between them. Two laps to go as they come to the start finish line. Marlin has caught the pack. Jeff Gordon is back from it. Check that. That's Craven. Gordon has caught the pack too. I think Ward Burton has his car up to speed now. I think he's going to be okay. I think you're right, BP. These guys aren't close enough and lined up enough to make a move on Ward Burton. <laughs> Should Spotter tell him where to go to block those guys? The traffic mixing and shuffling behind him. But Sadler and Jeff Bodine not able to mount a charge yet. Everyone on their feet at Daytona, some 170,000. As South Boston, Virginia's Ward Burton comes to the line. White flag, final lap. Here comes Dale Jarrett looking outside for third. Can't get it done. Oh! He bounces off Mark Martin. Jarrett is crashing in the final lap. Everybody gets by him okay. Elliot Sadler in the 21, the Wood Brothers car try and chase Ward Burton to the checkered flag. And if Elliot Sadler was shaking, finishing third in the Pepsi 400, just imagine what that young man is going through now, about to finish second in the Daytona 500. Got ready to faint, I'm telling you. Eighth two times is his best previous finish in the 500. Now in his eighth try at the Great American Race, it's going to be Ward Burton driving his Dodge to victory lane. Checkered flag is up, and Ward Burton is going to win the 40. and Ward Burton have just won the Great American Race. Looked almost like loud New Hampshire last weekend with yeah. Tommy Baldwin and Ward Burton con congratulating each other after winning the race. You know, and, and looking back at Daytona and relating it to last weekend, too, Benny, it's one of the great things about these races. You just don't know what's going to happen until the last lap is run. There's just no way to know. Last week, Ward Burton led about the last 100 laps, and you wondered, could he make it on fuel? The, really, the, the final decision was not made until the checkered flag wave. Hey, got good news. They're calling the drivers to their cars. We're going to get the race cars on the racetrack here, too. Fantastic. Let's go. About time. Mike Skinner going to get cinched back up in his Chevy. The 40 drivers still in the running in the Pennsylvania 500 about to get back to the office.